Philosophers have discussed um, the possibility and consequences of AI, you know, since the inception of AI, I mean, even before it was technologically uh, possible, you know, AI on a subhuman level, you know, the consequences like, you know, we lose jobs due to automation um, and sort of super intelligences, you know, taking over. Um, to be honest, sort of the established philosophers um, seem to be mostly out of touch yeah, with um, technological development, mathematical development, and um, assessing realistically um, what is possible, what is impossible, and, um, and, and, and the consequences. Um, on the other hand, there has been in the last 10 years um, quite a number of block discussions um, where um, this issue, especially AGI safety, uh, rationality has been discussed. Um, so there's overcoming bias and less wrong. I mean, sort of they have sort of calmed down. Um, um, there was a period with intensive discussion. And after that, uh, some established philosophers, you know, like um, David Chalmers or Nick Bostrom, have picked it up and nicely summarized what has going on um, by the non-establishment um, in, the, in the decade before and added also here and there something new. But um, so Nick Bostrom's book is a great summary of 10 years of discussion and goes a little bit also beyond it. And David Chalmers' article about um, super intelligences. Um, so yes, there is some good discussion out there and it's getting more and more. Um, it has mostly been um, done by, say, amateurs or non -acad academics, not at you know universities, um, but slowly uh, the say establishment you know um, um, accepts this topic and takes it more seriously. Yeah, there is you know some fear um, among. Uh, say the general public um, that AI uh, turns out you know bad for them or for society in general um, but as with every technology you know I technology can be good used for good and bad um, to pick some examples um, you know big fear is that um, job automation I mean we had the industrial revolution many jobs got automated people lost their jobs um, that AI takes over more and more, even you know, um, higher and higher skilled jobs. <clears throat> and that leads to um, increased unemployment. Um, I think the fear is, um, I mean, particular persons you know, will be disadvantaged, other will be advantages. That, but overall, uh, I strongly believe um, as long as we live in a politically stable um, society or, or a country, um, that overall we will be better off. Um, simple argument is, so if one job gets automated, we still produce the same goods and services, just with less labor. It's just a matter of distribution, uh, distributing these services and products. So nobody has to be worse off. The question is a fair distribution. And then also, how do we want to distribute the remaining work which is there? So do we want you know, an increasing unemployment rate um, with very high social benefits so that it's even sort of desirable for some people to be unemployed. You could sort of put the level of social welfare so that exactly the number of people who prefer to live on social welfare is the number of people which are out of jobs. Um, we could reduce the number of working hours, we could use the retirement age, so there are all kinds of ways um, we can do that or government could increase um, social welfare jobs, you know, you know, cleaning the streets or, you know, um, planting, you know, nice um, vegetation somewhere, making everything more beautiful. We could have more um, jobs which um, 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 require more social interaction, so taking care of elderly people, right, which is, you know, very important. And um, if we would have more money available for that or would pay these people more, then um, we could have half of the population, you know, take care of um, of elderly people, um, so that would create a lot of jobs. And we could afford it because all the products and services are now created um, by um, the machines. So that is one example where I think the general public and even politicians get it wrong. So um, the almost religious belief, you know, in we have to reduce unemployment rate, I think that should be questions. We want to increase welfare 
overall and distributed in a fair way. And there are many ways to achieve it. And reducing unemployment rate is one way, but not the only way. Um, so I think one should question sort of this paradigm, uh, which is rarely done. So one question is, you know, whether AI should focus more on short term or medium term goals, which are um, sort of useful um, in the sense that it leads to products which, you know, sell, um, or uh, whether we should focus more on um, developing AGIs, so artificial general intelligences, or superhuman, the superhuman capacity, um, or how we should distribute the resources. And um, I think there's actually a shortage of, let me say, there was until quite recently a shortage of funding um, AGI development. And the reason is simply um, business needs to make money in, in the short term, right? If you can develop a self-driving car or a personal assistant, um, um, you can make a lot of money. And so a lot of money is poured into the research. Um, but uh, nobody um, knows um, how much someone profits from, you know, um, supporting these long-term goals. Uh, luckily, there are more and more investors who um, believe that AGI is important, will come, and um, is hopefully beneficial. So OpenAI, for instance, um, is a billion dollars there for developing AGI. DeepMind, um, in part, works on that. So, but if you look at the total distribution of money provided for developing useful AI systems in the short and midterm compared to money provided um, for solving the big AI problem, um, I think it's still, the latter was still a very, very small part. So I would, not, for instance, some people are concerned that, you know, this money should be used for developing um, useful tools in the short term. Um, I think the short term view is still too predominant. On the contrary, we should pour more money in long term planning and thinking and research, mm -hmm. which is often fundamental basic research and uh, which always, you know, gets um, squished to the side. I mean, industry funding for basic research is very hard to get. Even government funding, you know, you always have to um, add a paragraph, you know, about the social benefit or the national, even the national benefit of your research. So it's, it's, it, um, it's, it's very hard to get uh, funding for basic long-term research. I mean, it's still better than, you know, say in some disciplines like mathematicians yeah, or even philosophers, right? Um, but, yeah. There are some people ask me, so why I'm interested in AI and AGI in particular. There's so many other problems and pressing problems out, like, you know, curing cancer and um, other diseases. Um, um, or working on a theory of everything in physics, right, which is sort of fundamentally interesting. And I mean, I have a strong interest in that too. Uh, but if you think about the AI problem, um, it it is special in the following sense. So if you really solve it and develop a system which is intelligent on a human level, then you can just ask the system to solve all the other problems. So it's sort of um, a solution, a universal solution um, to all kinds of problems um, in, a, in a certain sense. So that's one of the reasons I work on um, AGI. So we have seen in recent years, um, AGI has been taken uh, much more seriously, and more and more um, people, so academics um, and, and laymen uh, are discussing the issue. So, uh, and there's also funding about AGI safety. So Elon Musk, before he founded OpenAI, uh, donated $10 million uh, to investigate um, this question about um, AGI safety, for instance. It was distributed um, as, you know, many small grants. Um, I think, I have the feeling there's no I mean, more funding is always good, of course, yeah, but I think um, there's good funding and a number or enough people um, discussing these issues now. That was not the case five years ago. Um, so I would say there's maybe lack of funding on working on you know, basic um, questions, um, um, I mean, res real research questions um, rather than sort of ethical and, and moral questions. So there I see, um, more lack of funding. I mean, ultimately, if we really have AGI on a human level, it can solve all problems 
we are in principle able to solve. Um, the question is sort of if we are sort of as long as we are subhuman level, so which 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 are the problems which are solved by AGI, a little bit subhuman level, and in which order? Um, that could be an interesting question. Once we have reached human level, then they can solve all the problems um, which are in principle solvable, which we could solve. So, so before we reef, before we achieve human level AI, um, I mean the self-driving car is there, it just needs to be sort of deployed. Um, um, speech recognition, which is so good, and um, speech translation that we really can use on a day-to-day -day basis. So I just think about Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. You just put a barbell fish in your ear and all, uh, you know, you communicate with everyone in any language. I mean, English became a de facto standard, but it's still quite useful to, to translate in your own language. So then um, children only have to learn one language, which frees up a lot of brain capacity. Um, although learning two languages may be not so bad because you learn a lot of things about the differences in languages and so on. So I don't want to discourage learning a second language. Look, there are many difficult problems out there to solve. Um, you know, you know, curing cancer, other diseases, uh, global warming, although that is more a political problem rather than, um, than a scientific problem. Um, I mean, to a degree, it's a scientific problem if you sort of want to you know, actively influence the atmosphere. So decisions, some decisions have drastic consequences, I mean, big companies, and um, humans are only to a limited degree rational. So decision support systems, at least, uh, which make the best possible decisions given some constraints and, and some sort of goal, um, could um, really increase um, productivity a lot. So one area um, which could be automatized um, possibly before sort of human level AI is uh, maybe a large fraction of um, of lawyers, right? I mean, it's, you know, you have, you know, meters of law and you have to dig through uh, them, find the right cases, uh, um, the right laws and then make your case. Um, so I think that could be automatized to a large degree. Um, replacement of judges will probably take a little bit longer because, you know, this is, um, you know, rather subtle and um, you need a lot of, you know, um, experience and, and ethical judgment, I think, as a judge. Um, but um, eventually we could, you know, come up with an automated um, judge.